time. Where is the place where you spend most of your time? Home. Home. Exactly. So today I want to take you into this time frame to realize that we as humans have not undertaken building our homes the proper way. Um, every know, everybody knows about basic human needs, right? Food, you can't go out without food. Clothing, then again, you could do without. <laughs> Depends where you are. Uh, and shelter, for sure. Now, how is it that we, North America, have gone crazy with food? I mean, now everybody eats kale, right? I'm sure you had kale today or some green food of some sort, right? Or so no more trans fats, no more salt, no more sugar, no more gluten, no more food. But at least we're healthier, right? Um, then you look at clothing. How long, I mean, how far we've come. For us of us living in Nordic climates, we have learned to dress up with multi-layers and stay dry in winter, which is convenient. Now we're talking about the wearables generation, meaning that your shirt is going to have microchips in it. In fact, it exists already. And it's going to tell you how you feel and, and keep posture most probably, and, and so on and so forth. Now, why is it that the most important asset in our lives, the biggest expense, the one and only, your home, your condo, your cottage, is the one that we don't know how to buy. Now, let's play a game of observation. Here in North America, innovation, cost of housing is going up. Right, anywhere, just about anywhere. Even more so in places like Toronto, Vancouver, San Francisco, Los Angeles. In fact, Bloomberg just got a, uh, some sort of a survey out there that says that millenniums, won't be able to afford a home. That's it. Now, a couple of professionals right now in London, England, at the age of 45, if both of them are working, triple A jobs, might maybe consider being able to buy their first home. Now, something else to be said. Would you agree that quality is going down? I mean, have you ever heard of someone that bought a house that was built on time, on budget, and they're so excited that they want to undertake another project? <laughs> if there is someone out there, please come on stage. Or if you know of someone, make sure you connect them with me. So it seems that housing has been stuck in the good old, well, we've always done it this way. That's the way it is, you know? Now, our cars are self-driving themselves, if you haven't noticed. It's happening already. Our iPhones are smarter than we'll ever get. A big pen, a 12 cents big pen has more quality control processes. If you really take the time to look at it and that ballpoint and everything, and you know, you can't seem to be ever being able to empty a big pen. You know, it dies in the middle of a parking lot before you can empty that thing. But your house that you've paid hundreds of thousands of dollars of your hard earnings does not deliver to the promise to stand the test of time. Is it just me? Or we, human beings, have missed some sort of a chapter in the book of how to live well? Now, what else? Well, proof of the concept here in terms of innovation. This is 1877, just about anywhere in North America. And innovation steps forward, and here comes 2016. <laughs> Anyone can tell me what part is innovation in there? <laughs> well, it's color on the slide. Color, <laughs> brought to you by Technicolor, which celebrated their 100 year last year, by the way. That's it. Now, how is it that our garments can outlast our homes? How is it that we're so frenzied about being healthy that we tie knots within ourselves at a yoga class? But we forget that what we breed is within that house. We forget that house is built with this archaic structure, provides perfect housing 
for mold and termites. Now, there's some research out there that is trying to demonstrate, and they're getting there, that all these allergies that we have are probably related to what we're breeding in our own homes. But then again, when we go and buy out a house, oh, can I get a deal, you know? Can I get 25,000 bucks off? Or am I going to redo that bathroom or something? And we're trying to negotiate to the bare bone of a price to what is supposed to be where we're going to raise our children and make them healthy. So one research says that in 34 years, we'll pass from 7.3 billion people on planet Earth to 9.8 billion. I don't care how you add it up. It's a couple and more billion people living on planet Earth. So there's some sort of a housing issue here. I don't care in which spectrum you want to look at it from whatever refugee camps to Taj Mahal's to wherever. There is some, and it's 34 years down the road. It's not like a century down. So we've got a big concern. Two, used to be that parents had a lot of kids. Now, kids have a lot of parents. <laughs> Which changes the whole concept about how many apartments or, or, or houses do you really need? So much for reconfiguration, those last about three, four years, and then you split up again, you know? So how are we going to undertake this housing crisis? Issue number one was population. Issue number two is the energy crisis. Now, luckily for us, all of our world leaders are having some powwows to figure it all out. Mind you, buildings use 48% of North America's primary energy. Little hint to our leaders here. That might be a good start, good place to start with, you know? We're heating and we're cooling space, not the inside space, the outside space, which creates moisture and creates basically the perfect environment for all these little bugs in your walls. Issue number three, there's a shortage of labor. Every time you're, you're looking out for a contractor or a builder, it's like, well, I don't know anybody. You know, I can't really refer anybody or look it up. Well, 69% of the builders in the United States through a survey last October by the National Association of Home Builders said they cannot find a carpenter. And we're building with wood. Maybe there's something a little bit weird here. You're in computer, computer programs and you don't have programmers. You're into restaurant and you don't have a cook. So there is a dilemma. Now, issue number four. We all know that we're contributing to make this planet a much better place to live, right? Any of you do recycling? Raise your hand. Good. Hurry up before the person behind you slaps you. Okay. Anyone does composting? Very good. Now, as my kindergarten teacher would say, it's a nice social behavior. It shall make a difference at one point, except 40 to 60% of the waste in our landfills comes from the construction industry. And a major part of that comes from building your brand new house. I'm sure you've passed by a job site and you realize, what is this dumpster? Except for the welcoming party of all those future neighbors putting their mattresses and their tires in there and so on and so forth, you kind of realize at one point that's your hard-earned money that's going to the waste right from the get-go. I don't know, something's wrong here. What you see on the left there is a building that was assembled 5,000 years ago. Return on investment. One every f going and going, 5,000 and whatever years. Return on investment of the 2016 era, if you work with the vintage wood and dried and everything else, well, if you get 15 to 25 years, and at best, maybe 
if you stretch it out and really maintain it every weekend, don't skip a weekend, you might get it to 50 years. Something's fundamentally wrong here. Fundamentally wrong. Meaning that you'll have to rebuild, what, what is it, in terms of math, something like 100 times to, to take it to that 5,000 mark. So we build, we rebuild, we destroy, we rebuild, and we're supposed to be the ones doing our composting or a little blue recycling bin every Wednesday morning. Otherwise, your neighbor looks at you with a weird look on Saturdays type of thing. So I just want you to think that there are ways to make it better. Technology is out there. It's being used in the garment industry. It's being used in the aerospace industry. It's being used in the automotive industry. And we all know, we entrepreneurs, that sometimes the best ID doesn't come from your own trade. It comes from some other trade. That's where you get inspired. So digital fabrication enables us to go through quality at scale. Sure, someone, an artisan, can do the perfect little house, but cannot do it at scale. Tesla understands what scale is and giving you a better product. This is a way to do it. So you've got computer graphics, and what you see is what you get. No cutting, no piercing, no welding, no waste, and not only that, no interior load-bearing walls. So when you do want to reconfigure your house because your four kids have lived, basically left the house at the age of 28, finally do, you remove those bedroom walls, they might come back at the age of 32. So now you've got to put back those walls and add doors and windows wherever you like on a Saturday morning with your favorite brother-in-law, meaning that your house will adapt to your future needs, meaning you won't have to move, meaning when you take in your siblings, your parents, you won't have to move. You just reorganize the whole space. Isn't that what home, sweet home should be? So we need to build homes with structures that will stand the test of time. And what I want you to start thinking is that, should we continue to build houses or should we start building homes? Now the expression, flip my house, is appropriate. It's a fast profit, smoke and mirrors, one, two, get it out of there. That's a house, it's a commodity. It's where you live for one, two, three, four years, you're not attached. A home is a place when you have to let it go. When you move out on that Saturday morning, you put your precious belongings in your private cars as the van lines have all of the furniture. And you feel this obligation to go back inside once the home is empty with your kids, maybe some of your neighbors. And you feel obligated to go and say goodbye. And that's where you have a flash of those black and white and colorful, colorful memories. That is where we define home, sweet home, for the next generation. Thank you.